Hello to all my friends and family. It's great to be coming with you today on this broadcast. I love you so much and say hello to my family that are listening to this uh, sermon today. I'm so glad that we have a time. It's, it's election day, a very important time in the history of our country. This is probably the most important election ever held. And that's been numerous. There's been many, but this is very important today. And our Christian liberties are at stake, so keep that in mind. And I believe with all my heart that it's good to look at the Word of God and, and try to figure out what we should listen to today. As I was going down the road yesterday in my van, I was working for the funeral home yesterday. And as I was going down the road in the van, the Lord's Prayer, I was praying the Lord's Prayer. That's found in Matthew 6 and 9. That's the Sermon on the Mount. And I thought it was a very interesting scenario that I was praying that prayer when I began to think really what that prayer means. In Matthew 6 and 9, it says, Our Father. That means that we're collectively receiving Him as our Father. It's not just for us individually, but it's for everyone. We collectively have a Heavenly Father. He is the first pronoun of this particular uh, verse of Scripture. He is the one true Creator who created all of us. And our Father, and He's located in a place called heaven. You know, we really don't know where heaven is. It's somewhere, uh, it's coming down one of these days, but we know it's somewhere created by the Lord. In this great dimensions of the world, we know that heaven is a real place. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name with the utmost respect. Hallowed be thy wonderful and glorious name. We have a right as we for a Christian to use that name and access that name in prayer. We don't necessarily have to pray the Lord's Prayer. It's a good prayer to pray, but we go from there and use it as a guideline to pray in other ways and talk to God just like we would talk to other people. Uh, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. You know, there's a kingdom coming down. It's called the millennial reign, and Jesus is going to set up his millennial reign on this earth. And the kingdom of God is coming, and it's 1,000 years, and Christians are going to rule and reign with Jesus for 1,000 years. That's going to be a glorious time. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. That's one thing we want, the will to be done for, of the God in this election that we're about to take place today. Many people are already voting today and have already voted. Let's pray that God's will will be done. On earth, we want God's worth, will on earth as it is in heaven. We know there is no sin in heaven. There is no place there if you want to live forever in a place that's disease-free and pain-free. Heaven is a place. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that's my prayer today, that as I'm praying this prayer, that God will have his way in this election today. Of course, I think it's obvious how I will vote. And I think most of you know that I'm a conservative. But folks, I believe there's a, really an attack of Satan to try to take over everything that's in this country. And let us pray that God will resist this and rebuke this spirit in Jesus' name. And then the scripture goes on, Give us this day our daily bread. You know, the Lord supplies all of your need according to his riches and glory. And so if you have the Lord in your life, you can pray that prayer. I remember praying it many years ago. Give us this day our daily bread. And the Lord dropped that in my heart and give me a much better job with much more pay. And I believe that we can pray that prayer and access the will of God. Now give us this day our daily bread. And then we forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Let us have a forgiving spirit. If we have something against someone, we need to put it under the blood. You know, there's power in the blood. There's power in that mighty name of Jesus. Uh, and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. Sometimes we think some people are against us, and they're really not. Sometimes imagination can take over. But let us be obvious that the devil is a roaring lion seeking who may devour. And we need to be constantly on guard that we have a forgiving spirit. Even forgive those things that are in the past and start over and say, I'm going to forgive so-and-so. And by God's help, we can do it. 
And then it goes on to say, lead us not into temptation. There's a lot of temptations out there. Usually when we're tempted, we're drawn away by our own lust. But if we keep our eyes on the Lord and keep our focus on the Lord, we won't be tempted to do those things that are wrong. If we'll stay in prayer and stay in the Word, God will give us direction. And then he goes on to say, the doxology of this here, that goes on to say some wonderful words, For thou art the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Oh, isn't that a wonderful thing that it concludes by saying amen. He is the kingdom, he is the power, and he is the glory forever. There is nothing going on today that God can't tear, take care of. Regardless of how this election happens today, God is still in control of this company, uh, in this country. He still loves every one of you. He is interested in everything in your life. So I pray today God's blessing upon you, and thank you for listening to this broadcast today. I love you so much to all my family and friends. God bless you as you listen to this. I love every one of you in Jesus' name. Amen.